Hi guys, welcome back to Otter's IC Garage. Uh, today I'm in the garage working on the uh, big Revo. Uh, we broke it on that last skate park video and after I tore into it, I found some other things wrong with it. So I figured I'd pull the camera out and show you guys what I found. So on the bench, we have the big Revo. Uh, obviously we broke that rear link. Just hanging off here to the side. Um, I do have a new end, so I'm just gonna put a new end on it. The link itself's not bent or anything, so I'm good to go. I got, I think, four links that came with the kit, so I might replace all four in the back here, just start something, you know, start off fresh. But there was some grinding, and I thought maybe just the motor had fallen down. You know, I thought maybe the motor had fallen down from some of those hard jumps and was just, you know, rubbing on the spur too much. Well, once I got in here, as you can see, the motor sitting off to the side. Once I got in here, let's see if it'll focus on that. I got some teeth chewed right off of that. So I was wondering what was going on, and one of the things I think is going on, this plate, it just flexes a whole lot. Like a ridiculous amount of flex. Um, once you get the motor on there, uh, it relies on this bushing here, and then one screw to pivot. And I thought there was something up, because I have an 18 tooth on it, and it said an 18 tooth is what was stock. Now I know this is a brushed Revo originally with uh, twin motors. Uh, someone has converted it to the Castle brushless system, which is what these had factory brushless when they came brushless. So I know, like, with an 18 tooth, it should be, you know, pretty close to stock. Well, this is a 68 tooth, and stock is actually a 65 tooth. So I had the factory uh, spur gear. I'm gonna put that factory spur gear on. But while I was in here, I was like, you know, I already had to grind away, as you can see, on that ear uh, right here, try and make up for that bigger spur gear. And I think that's also led to a bit more flexing and more flexing, and that's why this ends up happening. Uh, it's only on like a, not even a quarter of the gear, like from here to about here. So I, I want to think it's just under that high torque load or something, it flexes and pulls away and just starts stripping the tooth. Uh, it also looks like it, you know, another sign that it's flexing. Let's see if I can get this in here. There, that's a real good shot. You can see that upper ridge. Well, when I have this set, it's gear mesh is like perfect. There shouldn't be that like slot where it's not. So that's another sign that it's flexing away from this and then stripping them. Uh, that's where we're getting that upper gap where it's not making contact. So, to solve this, luckily, I'm not sure who makes this or anything. I wish I did so I could tell you guys. But luckily, the guy that sold me this sold me this kit over here. Now, this is actually a brushless conversion kit for a brushed Revo going to brushless. Uh, makes it a center mount. Uh, it's actually it's he said he couldn't figure it out and well from what I can tell he's got it all screwed backwards like This plate's supposed to be flipped the other way. Uh, this plate is actually supposed to be flipped around the other way So I'm gonna try and make this work It looks like it shouldn't be that bad and then that will also give us more of a centered mount for that motor And as you can see it's a lot more of a solid plate here for the motor to sit in and it should give us a lot more wider range of gear options so I'm going to work on getting that converted over and once I get it on there, I'll probably end up bringing you guys back on and showing you what, I, what that all looks like. Uh, like I said, I've never put one of these on. I do, it doesn't look that complicated, but I feel like this is going to be a lot of put together, take apart, put together, take apart, put together, take apart. And I don't think you guys want to watch that. So I will come back to you guys when it is on. And whole new beast. Guys, I really like this setup. So this plate is, it's hard to tell. Let me bring the Trax plate in there. Can't really tell it, but this plate is about one mil. Now you can see that sliver. This plate, both plates are about one millimeter thicker than that Traxxas one, but with this little exo cage skeleton pin deal that it's got going on, 
this has made this motor solid there's zero flex like you could move that a good like eighth of an inch before the end of that motor uh, now there is nothing at all that is solid to the car another nice thing it gave us this uh, extra ESC mount which sort of lifted it up off the body of the car and does give it a little bit of a flex so it's almost like a built-in shock absorber for this ESC um, it did mount everything up high and I did double check but it should all clear the body uh, I already got uh, I already got it plugged in uh, reroute all the wires try cleaning some some of the stuff up I think it looks a little better uh, another nice thing uh, I didn't have to for this this wire is pretty tight but I was able to actually make it into the ESC box and get let me see let me just spin the car around all right so the nice thing is is this did lift the motor up so these things always have an issue with cooling so this got the motor up and in the air more so now there's more air around it that can move instead of just on top uh, I am gonna have to get a different fan this one's like slowly dying but it does work for now these new servos I did mount a second one of these uh, JX servos so now I got two of these uh, high voltage JX servos they are it's upside down but get the part number there they are CLS 6036HV uh, I believe they are 35 uh, kgs so that is pretty much what the factory ones are but I feel like these are quite a bit faster and they move these big tires a lot easier uh, I was very happy with it on the skate park but I'm going to now I guess go rip it around we found a open dirt lot and we decided we were going to set up a uh, little bit of a racetrack and we're going to test the mini e revo versus the 110 revo and see which one's better on the racetrack all right so we got both the revos out we're going to do a uh, four lap race we're going to try and do a four lap race i do have the gopro up on top so we'll try and uh, see how well that lo or how long that lasts and if it ends up flipping or something which i'm not going to go that crazy but um, Hopefully I'll leave the GoPro on the whole race so you guys get a full, cool bit of shots. Four lap race. We're going in three, two, one, go.
You're on what, third lap? Oh, do you know? All right, yep. Well, another drive shaft popped out. I think this terrain is just a little bit too rough for his, but it did put up a really good fight. But I think that, like I thought, that 10th scale, just it tears it out up out here. Um, I mean, it does have twice the tall tire, so it does make sense. Every revolution on that is like two or three on this just to keep up. I didn't do the jump. The jump ended up getting a little messed up. Um, maybe, maybe like a little bonus footage, I'll, I'll try and do the jump with the GoPro on top, just see if I can do it. But otherwise, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you guys next week. Oh, good thing it's a GoPro.